yet people in foreclosure didn't have enough to worry about. Getting scammed while they're in foreclosure, it should never happen. But it really shouldn't be a worry when seeking help. And worst of all, the scam I'm talking about today is one done by real estate agents. I don't know if it's a scam. That may be, well, a little harsh, but it's a lot more than just misleading and does put the seller in an even worse position. In this video, we're going to talk about how these awful people mislead homeowners in foreclosure in order to, well, personally enrich themselves. And we're also going to talk about what solutions a homeowner has when they're in foreclosure. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. So homeowners behind are their mortgage. They seek help. Who do they reach out to? They're probably thinking, well, who would know more than their local real estate agent, right? That's why I feel like scam may be, well, the right word because these agents are taking advantage of these distressed homeowners. And most agents, they don't know jack about the foreclosure process. Now, the homeowner goes to the agent and asks for their help. It's what happens next, which is, well, really the issue. If the real estate agent offers to help in negotiating and handling a modification or forbearance of a loan with the bank, then most likely you have an unethical agent on your hands and you should run. First, it's important to know that a modification or a bank granting a forbearance only happens if the homeowner requalifies for the loan. In other words, if someone lost their job or has a job, but the amount that they are being paid is less, then the homeowner most likely will not requalify for the modification and they're going to be denied. My point here is that if that agent who is saying that they are going to be negotiating the modification knows that the homeowner is unemployed or the income is not significant enough to support the current payment, let alone a higher payment, then they either don't know what they're talking about or are intentionally trying to burn some time while after these if to working in the best interest of that struggling homeowner. Why would they do this? The first reason is to project themselves as well the savior, as the person who has their best interest at heart and are the ones who are trying so hard to keep them in their house. The second reason is that they are the ones that are there to try to pick up the pieces when the modification request is denied from the bank. They pick up those pieces to convince those struggling homeowners that they need to sell their house in order to keep the bank from foreclosing and that they are the ones to sell the house. They have no other options, but I, I'm your solution. You see, selling the house earlier would have preserved more of the homeowners' hard-earned equity. It would also put them in a position of having more time. Why is more time so important? Well, more time in case the first deal falls apart, more time to find the right place and the important option is to move to. Selling the property ensures that a foreclosure is not on their credit report. A delinquency can be cleared up within a couple of years. A foreclosure is on the report for seven years. But every loan application you're going to fill out from there on is going to have one special question on it. Have you ever been foreclosed on? Now, the second you check that box, you're now moved into a higher risk profile and you're, well, you're going to be paying a higher interest rate for the rest of your life. Your other option is to not check that box, which, well, that would mean you're committing fraud. Not to sound agent serving, but an agent isn't going to do all the work of a modification for free. Quite frankly, the real estate agent is far from the right person to be doing this work. The agent is financially motivated to have the modification fail so that they can be the one and have the opportunity to sell the house and make their living. And earning a living is very hard to do in the real estate industry nowadays. Agents are desperate. And they are more motivated than ever to bend their well ethical standings in order to ensure their survival. And it's the struggling homeowner who is most likely going through the toughest challenge of their life. And well, they're the one that gets screwed. So what should happen? If a person is in foreclosure, then they need to call the bank. They need to update all of the information. What is the current balance owed? What are the additional fees owed? Is there a foreclosure date scheduled? Be honest with yourself. If the bank was to grant you a modification, that could you still afford the house if you know that answer is no because of, as an example, you're currently unemployed or your income levels have decreased significantly, then you are just going through the emotions and you're burning extremely valuable time. If the answer is yes, your income can support the current payment as well as a higher one. And yes, I did just say higher one because most likely the bank will need to increase the balance in order to pay off the deficiency owed. Quick example, let's say your payment was $2,000 a month and you were six months behind or 12 grand. 
then after the new modification, the payment would now be $3,000 a month for the next 12 months. Recently, I had someone reach out to talk about the bank's modification offer, where the bank was going to adjust their loan interest rate from 2.75% to 6.5%. Man, with friends like that, who needs enemies? The point is, a modification is not some magic pill or process. Also note that let's say you were 11 months into that 12 month modification plan, have one more payment left and then the modification would be cleared and you'd be back to your $2,000 a month payment. If you miss month 12, then you go back into foreclosure and start off exactly where you left off. So step one, get all the information. Step two, see if you qualify for a modification. If you think there's a chance that proceed with a modification route. Again, only if there's a chance. Step three, constant, consistent communication with the bank. It is the greasy wheel that gets the grease. Step four, if modification is granted, then congrats. If not, then it's time for the tough decision. Step five, decide on selling your property to keep a foreclosure off your record. Salvage your equity to ensure the bank doesn't steal any more of it and to fight to live another day or should you allow the foreclosure to progress. A foreclosure is never the right option, but if you decide to allow the foreclosure to progress, then can I offer you some advice? Don't move out right away when the bank forecloses. You can squat and have quite a few rights as a squatter. As a squatter, you can make the bank pay you with a cash for keys program, or you can just wait it out and live there for a bunch more months right free. If you have decided to go the route of avoiding foreclosure and ensuring the bank doesn't steal more of your hard-earned equity and going out on your terms, your way, then you will want to sell your property. Feel free to reach out and I'm more than happy to provide you with some aging suggestions who actually specialize in these type of sales in your area. And I'm also here for questions should you have them. Even if time is short, the foreclosure date has been scheduled and it's just days or weeks away, then you can still sell the property and avoid foreclosure. Private investors will buy houses for cash. And in as is condition, again, if this is the option that you're looking for, then reach out and I can connect you with a reputable investor that will give you a fair cash offer on your property. Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Don't hesitate reaching out with any questions. It would be a true pleasure if I can help you in these hard times in any way. Until next time.